Anybody else with uh, left foot, feet? Okay, just so the three of you, anybody else? Oh, you too? I do want you to stand up, and I'm going to have you say a few things over yourselves. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I want you to exercise your faith. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I have been raised up for such a time as this. Come on, you've been raised up for such a time as this. For the glory of God being poured out in this generation over you. Over you. Right now, today, in Jesus' name, going forward, I'm not taking on yesterday's baggage. 
I think that's really critical for what we just did today. Going forward, I am not taking on yesterday's baggage. I'm going to lay aside every weight. I'm laying aside the weight, the sin, which so easily besets me, and I'm running with patience the race that's set before me. There's a race. There is a race that's set before you. I want you to turn to somebody that you're sitting, standing next to and say, I'm so glad you're here. Are you ready to hear the word of God? Are you ready to hear the word of God? I'm ready to hear the word of God because God's doing a new thing today. He's doing a new thing today. We're ready. We're ready. Yes, we're ready. Thank you, Abba. We're ready. So not only did uh, we, we, you know, not only did we get to see some healings here tonight, legs and knees and, sh and even arms. I mean, she had her arms started to raise and no pain. And not only did we see some healings here tonight, but you know what also I want to share with you? Last, on Thursday, we had somebody that came, gave their life to the Lord. So salvation. Thank you, Abba. I had someone else that texted me and she said last week, uh, she, she told me about her financial need and we prayed about her financial need. She said that between IRS and something else, she said she received a $7,000 increase in the mail and it was exactly what she needed to pay some outstanding bill that she had. And she said after prayer, she goes, God made a way $7,000 like that. And it, and it met the need that, that she had. So thank you, Father. You know, it's so, you know, we give God all the glory, but look, he's, he is pouring out his presence in healing, salvation, and even financial increase. Amen. God is so good. He's faithful. Hallelujah. Tonight I titled it, Called to be a Fragrant Offering Unto Him. We are called. Church, we're called to be a fragrant offering unto the Lord. How many of you would agree and say, that's exactly what I'm called to be, is a fragrant offering unto the Lord. And I'm not going to shortchange myself just because of something that's going on in life or somehow how I might be feeling. I'm not going to shortchange myself. Because when I walk in this type of a calling, being a fragrant to Christ, right? This sweet aroma. I please him. And I know that I want to please God. How many want to please God in this room? Amen. We all want to please God. Amen. So we are admonished in the word of God in Ephesians 5. You can turn to Ephesians 5, 1. Ephesians 5, 1. Because we're admonished in the word of God in Ephesians 5, 1. To be imitators of Christ. To be imitators of Christ. And the Bible says... To imitate, which is to copy or to be like him. And we know God is holy. We know God is faithful. We know God is long-suffering. We know God is merciful. We know that God is perfect. We know that God has many, many attributes. We could go on and on and on. We're called to be like God. We're called to, we're called, we're called to be an imitator of God. Which means we must be growing in godliness. We've got to be growing in godliness, living a life that honors him. And so when we live a life that honors him, okay, we're following after his example, then that's how we let our lives become a fragrant offering that rises up unto him, a fragrant offering of worship unto him. Amen. Amen. Look at Ephesians 5, 2. And in Ephesians 5, 2, Exactly, it says to walk in love. So 5.1 told us to be imitators of Christ, that we're to be like him. 5.2 tells us to walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us in offering and a sacrifice to God. Walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself. He's given himself for us as an offering and as a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Who's given the sacrifice? He did. Jesus. This is his sacrifice unto us. When you think about this, this is incredible because if Jesus Christ has given himself, say he's given himself, given himself. for us. As an offering and a sacrifice to God. How much more are we to give of ourselves to him? 
an offering, a sacrifice, a sacrificial sacrifice unto him, a fragrant sacrifice unto him. We are to walk in this manner. And this is what pleases God, giving ourselves to him. How many would say, I'm going to give myself as a fragrant offering. I want my life to be a fragrant offering day by day and moment by moment. I want to grow and I want to grow in this fragrant offering. I want to know exactly how to do that. I want to be able to know when, when the when the spirit of the living God walks in the room or when there's a blockage, when there, where there's something that's limiting the fullness of Christ's expression, I want to be able to know it because I'm walking in one ship with him. See, we can discern the spirits when we're walking in one ship with Christ as a fragrant offering. Amen. And this is for all of us. It's for every single one of us. So when we give of ourselves to him fully, in obedience fully, then we are actually becoming that sweet smelling fragrance to him. Noah gave himself to God, right? Noah gave himself as an offering. I want you to think about this. He gave himself as a sacrifice unto God when he built the ark, regardless of the ridicule, regardless of the naysayers, regardless of the impossibilities that surrounded him, regardless of all the opposition that he encountered, Noah stepped out in faith. Noah did what pleases God, even though it looked ridiculous, because obedience is the highest form of praise. Obedience is the highest form of sacrifice anybody could ever give. It's what Jesus did. Amen. Jesus was obedient even unto death. Right? And so for us, when we're obedient unto the Lord, it's your highest form of praise. People think praise is just worship, singing. But obedience unto the king is your highest form of praise. Do you want to see more of the glory of God? How many in this room, I'm asking, I want to see hands. You want to see more of the glory of God. So every one of us, every one of us want to see more of the glory, his outpouring, his incredible signs and wonders. And this is what he's been doing. This is what he's been pouring out. This has been incredible to see what God is doing. Legs growing out, eyes being healed, you know, um, bulging discs being healed, compressed Di uh, spine being healed. I mean, all kinds of things, incredible things. You know, I am telling you, there is nothing at all that's going to stop the move of the spirit other than uh, an offense, uh, somebody walking in the flesh. Uh, but when you stay in the right place in Christ, when you stay in obedience to him with your heart, right, there's no limit to what God wants to do in your life. There's no limit at all. Say, so there's no limit, and I'm not going to put that limit on myself. There's no limit when I walk rightfully before my God, and I'm not putting that limit on myself. That's something we can do. Yes. The potential, the power is in us. Right? Christ in us. So we're not going to allow anything to stop the work of, of God in our lives. So Noah stepped out in faith, which pleases God. We can't please God unless we step out and we walk in faith. That's the only way we're going to be able to please God. It had never rained before, yet he obeyed the instruction. How many of you say, I'm going to obey the instruction. I'm going to obey whatever instruction God tells me to do. And your instruction may be this right now. Bloom where you're planted. Your instruction may be this right now. I want you to walk with your head held high. And I want you to keep on praising me, even though you don't know what I'm doing next. That's obedience unto God. Amen. I hear some laughter, so I think it's hitting home for some people. What do you think? Uh, when you turn to uh, Genesis 9, Genesis 9, 1, which is what we're referencing right now about Noah. And I want, I, this is important that you read this. Genesis 9, 1, I want you to see it with your own eyes. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Why did God bless Noah? Because Noah was faithful to be obedient to what the word of God was to him. The spoken word of God. The implied word of God. Right? The interpreted word of God. The revealed word of God. Be faithful to do it. Be faithful to stand. Be faithful to be an outpouring, an expression of God's love. Let me tell you, you will never be disappointed when you allow the love of God to penetrate your heart. When you allow the love of God to really move in your life. You'll never be disappointed at all. 
all. Amen. So we are offerings, a sacrificial offering. Lord, cause me to be an offering, a sacrificial offering, right? One that chooses to lay down our, my life, your life, our lives. One that chooses to lay down our lives because only what we lay down and let go of and only what costs us something is actually going to be a fragrant offering unto the Lord. We're not going to give to the Lord that which costs us nothing. Isn't that what David said? Yeah, that's what David said. Okay, let's look at Abraham because Abraham left everything he knew to follow after the call of God. And he became the father, the father of, of the multitude, right? The father of many. He was obedient in his offering, offering his life, offering everything within him. Oh, church, we have to, we got to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to really press into the fullness. There is, you know, Right now, what I, what I sense God doing is incredible. It's incredible. But don't think for one moment the enemy isn't trying to put some of you to sleep. Amen. Like literally, but also spiritually. He is. Right? But you don't have to allow it. You guys, you know what? You're going to have to war and you have to fight sometimes for what's rightfully yours. You have to war and you have to fight for what's rightfully yours. How many of you guys believe that in this room this, this evening? That you have to war... And you have to fight with what's rightfully yours. That's right. Amen. Amen. Mm hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question. How hungry are you really? Hungry. How hungry are you really for God's presence? When I, when I asked you to start praying in tongues, someone that's really, really hungry is going to really start praying in tongues. Amen. Amen. That's right. When I say the power of God is moving, but there is something blocking it, you're going to rise up as the army of God and say, oh no, not on my watch. I'm here. That thing has to go. Do you understand the anointing, the power of the anointing? I tell you this all the time. I'm not here to play church. Amen. And if God has entrusted me in this pulpit, then you know I'm going to tell you the truth because I don't want your blood on my hands. Amen. Right? Yeah. So there's an anointing that's being released all throughout every time we meet. Amen. It's a powerful anointing. I don't take credit. I don't take glory. It's all him. Amen. But it does take someone that's laid down. It does take someone that's self. They're, they're not going to be consumed with themselves. Amen. Why do I seem angry? Because I see the enemy trying to rob from you. That's why. Hallelujah. I see the enemy trying to rob from some of you. I'm not going to, I'm just, not, I'm not going to just turn a blind eye. There is an anointing in this room. To move mountains. You received your miracle. Amen. You came hungry. You came ready. You were pressing in. You received your miracle. There's people that received. But let me tell you something right now. For many, for a while, for a while, the Lord was teaching. And he was teaching you to come and be spoon fed. I'm just going to tell you how it is. Teaching you how to be spoon fed. Right? But there's a shift. Somebody say, there's a, there's a shift. It's time for me to exercise my own spiritual muscles. Yeah. It's time for me to actually press in and not wait to be fed. Yeah. It's time for you to make a demand on the anointing, and there is an anointing, and I can tell when you don't even tap into it. Hallelujah. So what have I done in the past? I've done the pushing for you. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I know some of you do, and some of you are going, what should I talk about? What should I talk about? I've done the pushing for you. But God has been speaking to me the past week and a half about this very topic. And he says, you need to tell them they need to push for themselves now. They need to start pressing in. They need to start pulling on the anointing. They need to come with an expectation, knowing that when they press in, more will happen. When 
not reaching no plateau and then just going to plateau off. But that's what the enemy wants. And I'm not going to allow that. Because I know the power of God in me. Do you know the power of God in you? Amen. Some of you do. And some of you are going to learn. Some of you are going to explore. Some of you are going to find out that there's great potential in you. Because of Christ in you. But when you come, I want you to come with a greater expectation than you have in the past. When you come, I want you to say, Lord, I'm not going to wait for something to come, for her to call me up. I'm not going to wait for, for her to only pray for me. I'm going to press in. I'm going to run to that altar. I'm gonna, I need everything you've got. I'm pressing in. I'm not leaving the same way that I came in. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. So we're, we're following? Yes. Yeah? Amen. I'm not mad at you. Yes. But I'm not going to let the devil rob from you. When we've reached such a beautiful high place, uh, we're not going backwards. Uh, no. We're not going backwards. Yes. We're going higher. We're going higher. But there is an expectation, and I'm putting that expectation on you all. Because it's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. Does this make sense? Yes. For some of you, it's making, yes? yes. Making sense? Yes. If it's for you, it's making sense. If it's not, that's okay. You just keep on doing what you can do. We're going to keep on ushering the presence of God. We're going to help you go forward. We're going to ke- continue. But I, but, it, but I do believe there's some graduations happening today. I believe that God is graduating some people today. There's an awakening today. The enemy was trying to put you all to sleep today. He's trying to, he was trying to lull you into a sleep. And I don't care who's watching. I don't care about Facebook Live. I could care less because maybe he was lulling them to sleep too. But let me tell you something. Wake up! Yeah. It's time to wake up. It's time to be the church. Yeah. It's time to wake up. It's time to take your rightful place. It's time to wake up. It's time to stop allowing a mediocre life be your life. When the potential for you to rise up and walk in a greater measure of anointing is now is now. Amen. Amen. So we receive that right now in Jesus' name. We all receive that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in Genesis 15, let's jump over to Genesis 15 because this is where the Lord said to Abram, he said, I am the Lord God who brought you out. And today God is bringing you out. He's awakening some of you today. He's awakening you because it was easy before, but now there's something you're going to have to do. He says, I brought you out, out of Ur to the Chalde- of the Chaldeans to give you this land to what? Yeah. Inherit it. I've brought you out I've, to give you this land to inherit it. He's in, he wants you to inherit something. He wants you to inherit something today. He wants you to receive something today. Ur. Yeah. Ur. The land of Ur. It means flame. And it means fire. It means flame. It means fire. The Lord is saying, I have brought you out of the flames. I've brought you out of the fire. I've brought you out so that you can inherit. How many are going to receive their inheritance today? How many are receiving an upgrade today? How many of you would say, man, I'm so glad you woke me up today. I'm so glad that you, you called that thing out today. I'm so glad that you listened to the Holy Spirit and that you just called that thing out because I'm not going backwards. I'm going forward. I decree over each and every person of you in this room here and those listening live. For those that are ready to receive that upgrade right now, just extend your hands because let me tell you something you got to make the devil pay you have to make the devil pay it means you got to rise up in boldness you got to rise up in holy righteousness and say devil you're under my feet I'm not going to plateau I'm going forward I'm going to increase in the anointing in the calling I'm going to increase as a laid down lover of the king I'm going to increase and my life is a sacrifice laid down for Jesus I'm not going to allow the things of this world to get me back no to keep me back when God says yes he says I've called you he says I've called you there's an increase 
There's an inheritance. Receive right now. Receive your inheritance right now. Receive your increase right now. Receive the increase right now. Some of you have a gift, a gift to press into God's holy presence like never before, but you let fear stop you. You let the enemy intimidate you. You let something from the past intimidate you. Enough. Enough. Amen. Enough. It's time to rise up and say, Lord, if you said it, then I'm claiming it. I'm inheriting it today. This is what happened with Abram. Yes. This is what happened with Abram, right? Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Lord brought him out so that he could inherit. And the Lord is bringing you out so that you can inherit more out of the fire and into your inheritance. Let's turn to Isaiah 43. Amen. Isaiah 43. I'm sure you guys know this passage pretty well. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 verse 2. It says, when you pass through the waters. I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers. They shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Say, I'm not going to be burned. I'm not going to be burned. Nope. Nor shall the flame scorch you. Nor shall the flame scorch me. For he delivers his people and he saves his anointed ones. Uh, that's Habakkuk. That's Habakkuk 3.13. He delivers and he saves. He's delivering you and he is saving you. He's giving you an increase right now, an open understanding, a mind of Christ right now, revelation. I just heard that for somebody in this room. So, Father, whoever they may be, and it may be more than one person, I'm sure. But right now, Father, I thank you for wisdom and revelation. I thank you, Lord God, that you're enlightening right now the, their, the, the, their understanding, Lord God. You're enlightening the eyes of their understanding right now. I thank you scales are falling off. Let the scales fall off right now. Not only on eyes, but on ears. The Lord just said ears. Scales falling off on ears. 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 Yep. And some of you with your arms up, you're just receiving it right now. Receiving it. Yep. Just continue to receive it in Jesus' name. You're going to see a difference. You're going to see that you walk differently. You're going to see that you walk differently. You talk differently. There's an increase of confidence in you. And that's the glory of God. That's the stirring of his holy presence. That's an expectation for more. That's an expectation that when you enter into the room, everything changes. When you enter into the room, everything changes. Why? Because of Christ. Because of Christ in you. Because of Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? Yes, amen. Genesis, let's go back to Genesis 15, 5. They'll put it up. But now he says, look towards heaven and count the stars. Here's the promise. If you're able, count them, Abram, and so shall your descendants be. So shall your seed be. Now the Lord is saying, He's saying right now, I am able to do that abundant, that exceedingly abundantly above and beyond for you. Uh, we mentioned that already today, Ephesians 3.20, right? How many of you guys claim that? Ephesians 3.20, according to the power of God that works in you. Why don't you put your hand right now on your spirit? Put your hand on your spirit. According, according to the power of God that works in me right now, there's an, ex, there's an exceedingly above and beyond. There's a hope that, that just overwhelms. There's a hope that's so overabundant and more than I've ever had before. And that hope is in Christ Almighty. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit our websites at Kathy Coppola Ministries at www.kathycopola.org. You can also visit us at Mighty Wind Broadcasting Network TV at www.mwbn.tv. God bless.